My name is Gordon Levine. I'm a stage four metastatic colon cancer survivor and a patient advocate. I wanted to talk about clinical trials, my experience with trials and cancer research, and some of the um, landscape that I see evolving over the past uh, number of years. In my case, I was diagnosed in 2014, and at the time, uh, certainly uh, the feeling was that a clinical trial was a last resort. So a patient would receive the um, standard of care surgery and chemotherapy for the most part. And uh, if you were lucky, you uh, went into remission. If you were unlucky, you had recurrence, which meant more surgery and or chemotherapy. Uh, ultimately, if you failed all of the lines of treatment, uh, you might look for uh, a clinical trial, almost uh, like a Hail Mary, uh, to try to see if uh, there was something that could help prolong your life. And at a minimum, the feeling was, certainly the feeling I had was at least uh, we would be contributing to the advancement of the science, uh, which was so important. So for me, I, I was in a clinical trial after three lines of treatment. And uh, after um, I exited that trial because uh, I had progression, uh, I had a fourth line of treatment that uh, was toxic. And then I received immunotherapy on, I will call it a, an experimental basis because it was not in a formal trial, but it was not under an approval. Uh, it was given to me off-label and um, was highly successful and uh, not only saved my life, I am currently no evidence of disease, which is um, an incredible result given how advanced uh, the uh, metastatic disease was. What I've seen uh, in the last number of years is, is a much different approach to clinical trials. And this is the approach that I take when dealing with a cancer patient that reaches out to me as an advocate. Namely, first step, sequencing biomarkers and determine the genetic makeup of your disease. And secondly, look for the most appropriate treatment for your specific biomarker disease. And in many cases, that may be a clinical trial, even as early as a first line of treatment. We've seen research showing that for certain biomarkers, a clinical trial uh, giving, for example, either immunotherapy or perhaps even a biomarker targeted treatment, for example, uh, for KRAS mutations, um, might offer the best results and at the same time avoid some of what I went through, which was repeated uh, chemotherapy that was not successful with lifelong side effects, including permanent neuropathy that I have, and instead going towards a treatment that could deliver the best results. And there's a second aspect to it as well that I see quite a lot. Many times when patients reach out to me, they've already been through one or two lines of treatment and they are weakened. The disease is weakening them and the treatments are weakening them. And to the extent that a trial offers a potential um, targeted or appropriate treatment, many of these patients do not have the strength to uh, travel potentially to get to that trial or even endure the uh, medications that they would receive on the trial. 
because having been through chemotherapy, radiation therapy, as well as immunotherapy, they're all different, but they all have debilitating side effects. And there's only so much that a body can handle. So that's why I try to stress to the people that uh, I talk to how important it is to not only determine your biomarkers, but to get second opinion, third opinion, look for trials. The trials might offer the most appropriate and treatment with the best possible outcomes. But even more recently, and it's very exciting, I'm seeing trials for lower stage cancer patients, stage two and stage three. Um, we've all seen this rectal cancer trial for, for lower stage, which not, uh, not only uh, delivered tremendous results in terms of getting rid of the tumors, it avoided the standard surgery um, and, and with certain types of cancer, especially GI cancers, surgery often will re result in uh, permanent ostomy or other matters uh, that will affect your digestive system long term. So th this is a situation where lower stage patients uh, in, in a neoadjuvant scenario uh, would be greatly benefited by a clinical trial. And that's a radically new way of looking at clinical trials as far as I'm concerned. Uh, I've also seen um, cases where stage three patients are receiving immunotherapy uh, in uh, post-surgery rather than the standard chemo that I received and are uh, getting very good results as well, which would um, have a greater chance of avoiding the recurrences that I suffered from, as well as reducing or eliminating some of the long-term side effects uh, that you uh, get from uh, long exposure to, to chemotherapy. So when we, when we put all of that together, we see that uh, clinical trial landscape now is not last resort for metastatic patients that are basically without any hope other than uh, crossing their fingers as a last resort, but um, it's, it's a tool in the toolbox that could be appropriate for a wide range of cancer patients um, uh, at, at various stages of disease um, to, to provide the best outcomes for each of these individuals. And one of the things that I did want to get across today, given that this is a patient-centric um, approach to clinical trials, is the role of the patient and the patient advocate. And I think that uh, number one, it's important for uh, clinicians and researchers to remember that um, a patient is more than biomarkers and data and DNA and mutations. There's an actual person who's a patient who's dealing with serious disease, life-threatening disease, dealing with all kinds of anxiety and other issues. And I think it's important never to lose sight that even though we are uh, happy to help with research and, and move science forward, we're still people that need to be um, acknowledged uh, in, in, in that scenario. We're, we, we call ourselves guinea pigs, but we aren't guinea pigs. We're, we're human beings. And the, and the last point that I'd like to conclude with is patients like myself who have been through eight years of treatment, trials, standard of care, protocols, surgeries, we have a lot to offer the research community. Um, we're, we're here to spread awareness, but we're also here to say, we wanna be involved, we wanna participate, we wanna help you design your trials in a way that will be uh, the, the most effective and will be the most helpful to the patients uh, undergoing the trials. So uh, remember us as patients and remember us as patient advocates.
Thank you.